Hey guys, welcome to this week's FAQ in Freebie Friday. Now for those of you new to the channel, these videos are all about answering your health related questions. So if you have a question concerning your health, something regarding health in general, diet, nutrition, herbs or supplements, or really anything regarding the topics of health and wellness, and you would like our help in answering your questions, all you have to do is leave those questions in the comment section below, and we'll be answering those based on popularity, the questions that we feel be most beneficial to the group overall, and of course the questions that we are capable of answering. And something else really great about these videos is that every week from that comment section, we select one lucky person to win a free bag of tonic herbs or medicinal mushrooms. And even if you don't have a health question for us this week, but you're still interested in winning some free products, all you have to do is make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, give this video a thumbs up, and then just drop any comment in the comment section below. With all that being said, let's get to this week's questions. Okay, so getting to our first question, this question is pretty simple. It reads, lower thyroid function versus higher range thyroid function, which is better for improved overall body detoxification? Say things like liver, kidney, lymphatic, intestines, toxins, and pathogens, heavy metals, etc. Okay, so there's a pretty simple answer to this question. I would say, generally speaking, you want normal or higher thyroid function compared to lower thyroid function for improved detoxification overall. So keep in mind, and I've mentioned this before, there is a very intimate relationship between the thyroid and the liver. This is something we talk about frequently on the YouTube channel and something that we discuss in more detail in our up and coming thyroid course that is now available for pre-sale at a discounted rate. We talk a lot about the correlation between the thyroid gland to all of the other organs and the major systems in the body. And in regards to detoxification health, the thyroid gland does play a pretty direct role or I guess an indirect role in the detoxification of the body and that's through its relationship with the liver. So the liver is the master gland of the body. It's the master chemist. It regulates all of the systems ultimately in every chemical reaction in the body by producing various enzymes, by producing various proteins and all sorts of other various immune cells and hormones even that regulate every physiological process you could think of detoxification included. So what happens generally is when the thyroid is low, your liver function also starts to become sluggish or low. And that means that the detoxification mechanisms of the liver also become impaired or less efficient. So one thing, for example, is when your thyroid is low and your liver function starts to become sluggish or impaired, your liver becomes less efficient at metabolizing or solubilizing the stress hormones in your body, including estrogen which is not just a stress hormone, but it is also a substance that is heavily uh, riddled in our modern environment. And a lot of the toxins in the modern world are related to their estrogen-like effects or their ability to stimulate the production of estrogen, which can stimulate a stress response by way of the pituitary and adrenal axis. So this is just one example of how the liver is responsible for detoxifying harmful substances from the body, estrogen and the xenoestrogens being primary examples of this. But the liver is also responsible for producing things like interferon, which is the body's natural germ killer. So in terms of killing off pathogens or viruses, if the liver is impaired, then it can't produce enough interferon to protect the body from these pathogenic viruses and other microorganisms. So even in regards to your question around the ability to detoxify pathogens or bacteria, the liver plays a central role. In terms of heavy metals, this is both a job of the liver and the kidneys. So if your, again, liver is not functioning properly, then the other systems in your body tend to downregulate. And when your liver is not functioning properly, this can also result in a poor kidney function and poor detoxification function overall. So really the liver plays a central role in detoxifying all the various substances that you mentioned, and it has a direct relationship with the other organs in the body. So answering your question about intestinal detoxification and health, as I talked about in an earlier FAQ, I think, or as I talk about in our thyroid course and in our perfect digestion course, the thyroid directly affects the liver, which directly affects the rate of digestion and intestinal motility. So under hypothyroidism, there's an increased likelihood of things like constipation, which would lead to toxic bowel and poor detoxification. 
And this is because low thyroid function is going to also slow down overall digestive function and specifically digestive motility. So the rate at which your body can eliminate waste from the intestines. So in this way, it's preferred to have higher thyroid function to make sure that you're keeping things moving from the intestines as well. Now in regards to lymphatic health, the lymph system doesn't really move by itself. However, the kidneys do play a major role in lymphatic drainage and overall lymphatic health, which again is directly related to proper thyroid function. Remember, every system and organ in the body is affected by the thyroid gland. And one thing in particular related to you know, moving uh, things in the lymph and in the circulatory system, this is again directly related to proper thyroid function. When the thyroid is low, there's an increased production of stress substances that tend to lead to vasoconstriction and impeded blood circulation. And I'm not aware of any direct correlation between uh, low thyroid and low lymphatic function. However, I could imagine due to the strong effect that the thyroid gland has on the circulatory system, that if your circulatory and blood is starting to become more stagnant, that it will also lead to a, a greater accumulation of toxins in the lymphatic system. Because as your the circulatory system becomes slowed or bogged down, there's a greater likelihood of toxins accumulating in the blood, which would ultimately make their way to the lymphatic system where they will also likely accumulate as well. But I think in addition to improving overall thyroid function for good lymph health, it's just important that you are moving on a regular basis. You know, in traditional Chinese medicine, they have a philosophy that you always want to be in motion to keep chi flowing, and basically stagnation is death. So this could be looked at in a physiological sense. If your blood becomes stagnant, if your blood's not circulating because your thyroid's low, if your intestinal motility becomes stagnant, you're gonna you know accumulate more waste. But also in a physical sense, if you're just stagnant and not moving, whether it's because you're on bed rest or you're just generally inactive and sedentary, this could directly impair your body's ability to detoxify or specifically move the lymphatic system. But also remember that physical movement does have a beneficial effect on thyroid function overall. So it's, everything's really connected. But in terms of just looking at thyroid health, I would imagine due to, again, the effect that the thyroid hormone has on the overall circulatory system and cardiovascular system, that there is a correlation between a low thyroid function and more uh, lymphatic lymph tissue and lymphatic drainage. But Remember, one of the best things you can do to keep the me metabolic rate high and to keep thyroid functioning properly is to be active on a regular basis without inducing a hyperventilated like state or running out of breath. So basically, moving at a moderate pace so long as you're not overexerting yourself and stressing your body is essential for proper thyroid function, which is essential for good detoxification. So to answer your question overall, in a few words, you're gonna want to make sure that your thyroid is working more normally and that it's higher rather than lower to keep the liver working efficiently, to keep the intestines moving efficiently, to make sure your kidneys are moving uh, toxins throughout the body, to make sure your liver is producing enough interferon and other germ killers, and to keep the immune system strong as well. All right, taking a look at our second question. This question reads, what would be the cause of today's unknown illnesses like chemical sensitivity, ELA, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, etc.? Okay, so in my opinion, in my research, I think that stress is really the cause for a lot of these conditions and most health conditions in general. I'm not sure where the study is, and it was a couple of years ago I came across it, but there was a study confirming that about 98% of illnesses or diseases are induced by stress. But we have to clarify what we mean by stress. So in medical terms, they're talking about anything that throws off the homeostasis or the balance of the body, which could really be anything. And this is something that traditional Chinese medicine talks about and the concepts of yin and yang, that life is about a balance and really everything in life, every extrinsic and intrinsic factor of force is affecting your body and is challenging your body to either stay in balance, it's either pushing your body out of balance or pushing your body back into balance. So I really think that most things in life are an adaptogen in the sense that too much of it can be a bad thing or too little of it can be a bad thing or harmful to your health. So take for example sleep. Too little of sleep can cause chronic deficiencies. Too much sleep can cause an imbalance as well. The sun, 
too little of sun can cause a vitamin D deficiency, can cause immunodeficiencies, low energy, but too much sun can cause burning, pain, and other health issues like free radical damage and possibly even cancer. And then same goes for sex. Too little of sex can cause testosterone issues, uh, low libido and health problems. Too much sex can also lead to elevations of prolactin and estrogen and also lead to stress as well. So in this sense, I think the medical definition of stress is pretty accurate, at least when we're talking about health. Anything that's going to push your body out of balance or out of equilibrium can be considered a stress. So in regards to you know the cause of these conditions specifically, I think these conditions are coming into play uh, today more than they ever were before because of the increasingly stressful nature of our modern lives. So there's so many more stressors today than there ever was before in my understanding. You know, there's tens of thousands of chemicals that are in our environment. As an example, if you've been following the DuPont case, you know, the Teflon is everywhere in our environment and pretty much every modern person in America has traces of Teflon in their tissues. And it's a, a non-biodegradable substance. So it literally just doesn't break down and accumulates in your body. And this is a substance that's only been around for 50 years or so. And there's a lot of other substances like this, a lot of the herbicides and pesticides, things like atrazine, the amounts of fluoride in the water and products Products. Uh, a lot of the different oils that we use today are completely unnatural, man-made, and again, riddled with tons of chemicals, a lot of them I'm not even aware of. You're talking about the phthalates, the stearates, parabens, and the other substances that are used in industrial practices to make a lot of the modern industrial food and consumer products that we use today. These things, I think, are creating a stress on the body that were never really there before. And a lot of them from research are highly estrogenic. And I think the estrogen in the environment is a major cause for a lot of these stress-driven conditions. So hypothyroidism is a stress-driven condition, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, MS, and then even the chemical sensitivities you talk about. These are really related to gut issues and immune issues. And all of these things, I think, come back to in overburden on the body, a, an intense amount of stress that the body was never previously under. So I really think the cause of a lot of these up and coming illnesses and diseases that weren't around before are really related to the increasing amount of stress and environmental toxins that we are exposed to today. Not to mention that our social structure, societal structure, I think is increasingly more stressful than it ever was before. People today tend to work more than they relax whatsoever. And this can create a major imbalance in the body because the body, to, in order for it to be healthy, needs to be in more of a parasympathetic state or a relaxed state way more than it ever is in a sympathetic state. And I think that that's kind of how things are in nature. You know, animals, for example, for the most part are relaxed, they're chilled, they're hanging out. And every once in a while, a predator comes along and they go into more of a stress state or a sympathetic state. However, today, this situation tends to be in an influx where people are chronically sympathetic and stressed out and only experiencing brief moments of relaxation. So this is gonna lead to disease because when you are in the sympathetic state, you're activating all of the stress substances, the emergency substances that really start to break down your body, suppress the immune system, suppress the digestive system, slow down the metabolism, which is going to lead to inflammation, stress, and disease. And in regards to the modern environment, I know this is something I talk about a lot, but I think it's really important because the xenoestrogens are so heavily estrogenic in the body. And when we are exposed to them on a consistent and chronic basis, what happens is those xenoestrogens, they're fat soluble. So any fat tissue in your body, they're gonna store in and they're gonna cause a continual or chronic stress response because those xenoestrogens stimulate your adrenal glands to produce cortisol and they break the communication network or the feedback loop between your pituitary and adrenals. So your pituitary never gets the message to turn down the stress response with the cortisol. So in this way, if you're exposed to heavy amounts of estrogen all the time, which most modern people are because it's in the food, it's being sprayed on the food, it's in water, it's in birth control, it's in medications, it's in plastic, it's in all of the plastic products, it's in receipts, it's in an endless amount of stuff that people use on a regular basis and getting into the body, into the fat tissue or the fat cells where they're stimulating a chronic stress response and pretty much every one of these diseases or unknown illnesses you talked about are heavily stress driven and stress induced particularly related to high levels of estrogen and cortisol, which lead to catabolism, uh, the breaking down of the body, high levels of estrogen and cortisol directly suppress, again, immune function, digestive function, metabolic function, and this would 
give life to pretty much all of the symptoms of these issues. And if you look up a lot of these symptoms, chronic fatigue syndrome, all of the symptoms are pretty much that of hypothyroidism. Uh, fibromyalgia, a lot of those symptoms are related to or share similar overlapping symptoms to hypothyroidism, which is that they're really driven by, again, stress and inflammation. So I really think that the high levels of estrogen in the environment, as well as the general stressful nature of modern living, people will tend to spend so much time indoors under artificial blue light, which is suppressing their metabolism. They're not going outside, so they're running into light deficiencies and vitamin D deficiencies. Indoors, they're more likely to be exposed to a lot of the estrogenic substances unless they're living in a natural home made of completely natural materials. So I think the fact that people are spending so much more time indoors, they're more likely to be exposed to the variety of xenoestrogens and actually getting outdoors into a natural environment, uh, something like the woods on a mountain, you know, in a forest is a lot less likely or a lot less common today than it ever was before. So I think these things combined, the environmental toxins, which have been related to a lot of these issues because they're known to, again, suppress the immune system, cause stress, and even activate retroviruses in the body, as well as the stressful nature of modern society, I think, is a huge cause for these conditions. And I really think the only way to correct them is to take a look at, you know, the sources of them. So looking at how you're particularly stressed out. Everyone's stress is a bit different. Some people live a very natural and clean life, but they're undergoing some sort of other psychological stress. Other people have an opposite situation where they're sort of stress-free mentally and emotionally, but their environment's very stressful. So it's hard to say what it is exactly, but I would imagine that it's really just the accumulatory stress that we face today, which is so much more greater than I think it's ever been before. Again, because a lot of the industrial products today and just the stressful way in which we live uh, in terms of how we survive. So hopefully that answers your question in terms of what to do about it. You know, you really have to just find ways in your unique life to reduce your stress, whether that's in environmental stress. So if your environment's toxic, whether that's you're in a toxic living situation uh, in terms of the people you're around, you have toxic relationships, whether that's a mental and emotional stress that you're not dealing with. It could be a financial stress. It could be a dietary stress. You know, there's so many different sources of stress today, and that's the real challenge. So the first thing you're going to have to do is really evaluate your life, take a look at what could be the major source for your life and in your environment, and then start taking proactive steps to reduce those stressors. In terms of environment, it's just a matter of living a more natural life and kind of cutting ties with the industrial modern life or modern world as much as you can. Obviously, the mental and emotional stressors are a bit more difficult to handle, but if you want help there, I do have a book called The Fundamentals of Success that you can find somewhere. I'll link it below. That's very helpful for managing and addressing uh, psychological, mental and emotional stressors and just other life stressors. So relationship stress, financial stress, you know, uh, personal stress. That's a really good resource for handling those things. Otherwise, the use of adaptogenic herbs and medicinal mushrooms, I think, is very beneficial for modern living because they can help your body cope with the various stressors that I'm talking about. So I think the solution would be to clean up your environment, find the source of your stress and take proactive steps to eliminate it. And then along the way, you know, support your body as much as you can through the use of the adaptogenic herbs and medicinal mushrooms and just, you know, good, healthy, clean living. So doing things that make you feel good, keeping your spirits high, you know, creating a life in which you enjoy that's more pleasurable than it is painful. All these things are going to be very beneficial. At the end of the day, your health is all about a balance and that balance is as simple as making sure that you're feeling more pleasure and happiness than you are feeling pain and suffering. And again, that's a very subjective thing. So that's really up to you to figure out. All right, guys, that brings this week's FAQ and Freebie Friday to a close. Remember, if you're interested in having your questions answered or you'd like to win some free herbs and mushrooms, all you have to do to be entered to win is subscribe to the YouTube channel, give this video a thumbs up, and just leave your questions and comments in the comment section below. Otherwise, for those of you who I've referenced any sort of material to, whether that was a course, particular tonic herbs and mushrooms, or referencing any of the studies I shared in this video, you can find links to all of that information in the description box below.